Hi, my name is Nick Allen and I'm a Cycor Solution Architect at Nonlinear Digital. During this screencast, I'm going to be walking you through the basics of creating AB or multivariate tests in the Cycor page editor, demonstrating how quickly and simply you can get up and running, creating compelling and dynamic content. So before we get started in Cycor, I want to introduce you to our fictitious site, the Learn Center. Uh, the Learn Center has two uh, current conversion points on their site. Either people will sign up uh, to engage with one of their courses or they can sign up for a free information pack. It's always important when you're beginning to do AB or multivariate testing to have a clear idea of what the goals of your site are. Um, so we always recommend uh, spending time uh, doing that before embarking on a new project. For those of you already using Sitecore, this will be a familiar page for you, the Sitecore introduction or welcome screen. Uh, and this is how we go ahead and actually log into the CMS. Uh, because we're going to be using the page editor to uh, define our AB split tests, uh, the two modes that we want are either desktop mode or page editor. Uh, for our purposes, we're going to be looking at a few more pieces of Sitecore, so I'm going to use the desktop. But if you are just simply logging in to use the page editor, you can go directly into that UI. Okay, so I'm going to open up the content editor, which is going to show us our site's content tree, which is a, a direct one-to-one -one mapping of the uh, URL structure of the site. You can see this is very simple um, demonstration. So we have the home page, um, a landing page for each of the distinct areas of the, of the site, uh, a thank you page for those who have signed up for a free information pack, and a couple of special folders that I will talk a little bit more about later, the content repository and our data sources. So with the home node selected, I'm going to select the publish ribbon at the top here and select our page editor option. What page editor does is it gives us an exact uh, or close representation of what our actual site looks like. Except the difference here is we can actually select these elements on the page. Uh, we can ev even edit them directly here, or we can select the actual what we call components um, to perform additional actions. Uh, up in the top, we can also add additional components uh, so we can see the areas of the page and where we can do that. Uh, but for our purposes, we already have our components prepared. A small technical segue at this point, in, able to, in order to enable uh, the testing of components, we need to be able to serve the content for our components with using what's called a data source item. And this has technical implications because we have to build our components to not only look at the current context item uh, for their data, but to actually look into that data source uh, as well. Um, I won't talk uh, too much about that aspect of this, um, but it is important um, to understand that from a technical point of view, we need to consider this architecture from the beginning of the project. So with our component selected, the option we're interested in is to test the component, which is these two sort of overlapping red boxes. Clicking on that brings up a dialog box that enables us to start defining our variations. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new variation, call it new variation one, if you like. Um, and in our case, I'm just gonna call it the default. Because we already had a data source selected for the component on the page, it assumes that we want to use that data source as the um, data source for our first variation. Uh, but if I click on this, I can change that data source. What I'm just gonna do now is jump back into the content editor just to uh, talk about those special folders I mentioned. It's always good to keep your content tree organized. So you can see that I've got a clearly defined area in my, in my content tree where I'm gonna store these data sources. So you can see underneath there, I have a section for my home page. Underneath there, I have a section for my call to actions. And this is where I'm currently just storing, uh, storing my default call to action. So you can see, uh, looking back on the page, we have our uh, what I'm calling a title and a subtitle and three buttons. This maps directly to this item here. So this is where we're actually getting our data from uh, to serve the content on the page. The title field, the subtitle field, the large image displaying to the right, and the listing of the three buttons that we want to display on the page. So again, we have two ways of uh, defining a variation. We can either vary the content by simply changing the data source item and tweaking the content slightly. So we may want to display a different title to the user, or we can completely change the layout of the component completely. And in this demonstration, we're gonna do both. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enable variation of component design. That allows us to not only change the data source, but also change the component uh, layout uh, to serve up a component that displays the information in a slightly different way. So the good thing about this is we can reuse our data sources. So if I go ahead here and select uh, my second option for layout, which is simply to reverse the, the call to actions. So if I select this, and up here I've still got my default data source, and say OK. Site core in the background has gone ahead and created that test for us. And that's really it. I mean, from a, from a basic setup of an A-B split test, we're already done. So from a content authoring point of view, we can get up and running very, very quickly. And you can see now that we've defined our original test, uh, we have this new uh, letter showing up against our component. That's telling us that currently on the page we are looking at variation A. I can go ahead and change this and look at variation B. And you can see that simply what we've done is we've just changed the title and subtitle so that it displays underneath the buttons instead of above them. It's a simple um, demonstration, but it sort of illustrates the point. If I go back into my variations, um, I'm actually going to give them a name so that uh, it makes a bit more sense uh, to me when I'm looking at them on the page. So I'm going to call this uh, default. I'm going to call this reverse display. So this time I'm going to add a new variation. I'm going to use the title above the buttons, but this time I'm going to change the actual data source. Um, a really nice feature is that I can clone the current item so I don't have to recreate all of the content from scratch. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to call this, uh, let's call it default title. Well, let's actually get rid of the default and call it aggressive title. And I will say OK. So here, again, we're looking at our reverse display. Now that I've changed the names, the, the names make a bit more sense here. So I can jump between the names if I like. And in this one, this is now uh, using what we call our new data source, the cloned data source of our original. If I actually jump back into our content tree, you can see that what Sitecore's done behind the scenes is create this new item for us in the content tree, and it's slightly grayed out because it is a clone. What that means, by what, what I mean by clone is that uh, what it's going to do is it's going to take all of the original values of the item that it was cloned from, but I can override one or more of the fields if I want to. So in this case, I'm going to change the title of my aggressive title. I'm going to change it to sign up now. There's no time to wait. And I'll go ahead and save that. And then I'm going to do one more variation here where I'm going to sort of mix up a couple of options. So in this case, I'm going to um, call a variation button order. I am going to use the reverse display. I'm going to clone the content again. Let's say OK to that. Let's go ahead and save. And this time I'll need to make a change in the content editor. Uh, there are ways that we can make this these fields accessible from the page editor, but for ease of use right now, I'm going to do it here. So I'm just going to change the order of our buttons to move professional to the bottom, alternative education to the top. Let's go ahead and save that. If I reload my page, we now have our default. We have our reverse display. We have our aggressive display aggressive title, sorry. And we have a reverse display, but also reordering the buttons as well. Now that we have our variations defined, uh, the final step is to actually go ahead and make that live on the website. So the first thing that we need to do is go ahead and go to our testing ribbon at the top here. Um, and 
simply all we need to do is hit the start test button. Yes, we want to save changes. Let's call it the home test. And that's our multivariate test deployed. The final step in the process is to actually go ahead and publish the changes to our homepage. And that's it, we're done.